Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. I would like to describe some model and dye materials for you, but first let's take a look at the relationship between a model and the impression. We have an impression of a edentulous arch, and if I remove this impression, or remove the, the model, we can point out the relationship uh, between the impression and the model. The first thing to notice is that the highest point in the impression is the lowest point in the model. Also, the lowest point in the impression will be the highest points in the model. So in a sense then, a model and an impression have the relationship of a negative to each other. So that in looking at models, you will see the high areas will be low areas in impressions and frequently left will be right. So that this is the uh, traditional relationship then between a model and its uh, respective impression. Of the various model and dye materials, and we should indicate briefly the difference between the terms model and dye, the term dye is generally reserved for an individual tooth, while model would be for a multiple impression with many teeth or a full mouth uh, impression. So that there's nothing mysterious about the terms except that dye is generally reserved for a single tooth. Of the various materials used in dentistry, the most commonly used are those of the gypsum products and metal dyes. Let me show you first one of the most common materials, dental model plaster. This is a full maxillary model and maybe also used in this uh, particular application would be a material called regular stone or sometimes called cast stone. Now the colors of these products may vary. Uh, this particular product happens to be pale yellow while your model plasters generally are white in color. This is not necessarily completely true so that you have to be careful in terms of reading labels on cartons in the dental laboratory. A third gypsum product is called improved dental stone or densite. This particular material is rather pale pink but there's an additional product called Duroc which is uh, greenish in color. Now the principal differences between these three products, model plaster, dental stone, and improved dental stone is principally in the amount of water that can be used in order to make a mix with these materials. In order to mix model plaster, you must use something in the order of 50 to 55 milliliters of water per 100 grams of powder. If you use dental stone, you can mix 100 grams of dental stone with as little as 30 milliliters of water. And with this model that I have here of improved dental stone, you can use as low as 22 to 24 milliliters of water for 100 grams of powder. Since in the reaction of the gypsum material with water, approximately 19 milliliters of water is required per 100 grams of powder, you can see that considerable excess water is used in the mixing of the model plaster. As a result of this, you'll find that the strength of these materials is in the order of model plaster being the weakest, then followed by regular stone and followed by improved stone. It's also um, that you will find that the cost of these materials increases as you go from model plaster to improved stone. So that these materials then would be the typical gypsum products. They have the advantage that these particular materials can be used with almost any impression material, which is not true with a number of the other materials that we'll describe. 
Now let's go on and take a look at making some metal models. One of the most common methods of making a metal model is to electroplate an impression. In this case, we've taken a rubber impression of the arch and we have uh, wired this up and we've made the surface of the area that we wish to uh, make metal electroconductive by painting it with a silver powder. Then we have placed these wires in contact with this and have placed this then in an electroplating bath. Uh, we have plated silver in this instance and this is plated from a cyanide bath in a basic solution. This is essentially uh, hooking this up to a battery and uh, simply allowing the silver to plate on the surface of the impression. Now obviously we don't um, need to have a very thick layer of silver and so that this plating is generally done uh, something in the order of overnight. Give you an example of the uh, relative thickness of the the plating that would be used. This is a piece of, uh, of silver that's been stripped out of an impression. Now this is not normally done. I've simply uh, stripped it out to show you uh, the approximate thickness of the uh, electroplate layer. Now of course you could continue and fill this up uh, completely with silver, but that would be a, a highly uh, uneconomical type of procedure. What is normally done then is to remove the, the wires and now that we have this impression, I think you can see in this area, we have this silver plated here and silver plated here and we have ample thickness now to go ahead and complete the uh, preparation of these particular dies. What is necessary then is to somehow fill up the remaining portion of the, of the impression with an additional material. And in this instance, we've taken essentially a metal post and it has been embedded then in the area of the tooth with acrylic resin. And the same with this particular tooth. So that now we have two posts, uh, both embedded into the areas of the teeth in which we're interested in taking an impression. Now we can lubricate the tips or the metal posts and we can go ahead and pour improved stone into this impression area. And we can obtain a model such as this model, which now we have most of the model now is poured in improved stone. However, we have four prepared teeth that uh, are essentially silver surfaces. Now we have one distinct advantage with this particular procedure because you can see we now have these posts protruding through the base of the, of the model. We can simply push on these and we can remove these individual teeth which now would be called a metal die. So that we have again uh, reproduced the tooth structure, only a surface coating of silver, uh, mainly supported in this case again by acrylic resin. This allows us a very simple access in terms of placing wax now into the prepared area and proceeding on with the gold casting procedure in the preparation of gold restorations for these teeth. These can simply be placed back in and have the regular relationship of one to another. Now in general, we are also interested in the relationship of the upper teeth to the lower teeth. And in this instance, we have taken an impression of the lower arch in this instance, in regular dental stone, we have now the upper arch. Uh, the base of the, of the model is in improved stone, and then we have the teeth uh, essentially in silver. Again, 
These preparations can simply be removed and the wax patterns prepared on these particular dies. You can see this is a rather complex type of restoration. It would be very difficult to do if we could not remove this particular die. You see the three pins. This is a typical pin ledge type of preparation for an anterior uh, tooth restoration. So that now we have the relationship of the upper teeth uh, to the lower teeth. And we also have the lower teeth with a metal surface, in this case silver, uh, supported by dental stone. Now there are other types of metal plating that can be done. There's one other product, and this is dental impression compound uh, that can be used to prepare a plated metal die. This material, however, is very brittle, and you can see if I take this, and it's very readily broken in two pieces. If you will examine the impressions taken with this particular material, you can see that in the gingival area is always larger than in the crown area. So that with a brittle material of this type, this impression can be removed if we had undercuts. In other words, if the crown area were larger than the gingival portion, of course, we could never remove this impression simply because the material is not elastic and is brittle. Now, in general, what is done is to select a copper band such as this. These come in a variety of sizes and uh, they can be trimmed, as you can see with these two dies or two impressions that we have here. They can be trimmed and adjusted to the shape of the tooth. The um, compound is simply softened by warming either in water or in a flame. And then the material, while it's in the softened condition, is simply forced over the preparation and held in position until the material hardens and cools. The material then is, uh, is removed, and we need to make the surface of this impression electroconductive. This can be done simply by painting the inside of the, of the dental compound with a material called aquadyg, which is a suspension of graphite in water. This makes this uh, surface electroconductive, and then we can use a copper plating bath, which is a copper sulfate solution in a strong uh, sulfuric acid uh, plating bath. And then again, using a battery, we can simply plate copper on the surface of this uh, particular dental compound. I'd like to uh, show you some examples of some impressions um, made in this manner and dyes prepared in copper. In this instance, you can see, again, we have a preparation in which we have no undercuts present. In other words, it's always larger so that we do not have any problems removing this brittle uh, impression material. It's always larger at the base than it is at the crown area. Now again, we generally uh, would not take the time to completely fill up this impression area with copper. We simply electroplate a millimeter or, or so of thickness, and then we fill up the rest of the impression area with a second material. In this case, uh, this silvery looking material is a low fusing uh, metal. This is a metal which uh, will melt at about the uh, boiling point of water and simply can be heated and poured into this area and then in this case they've been trimmed. This model is really sort of a, an antique in a way because it uh, shows two dies. It shows a copper die which is not particularly common any longer, uh, particularly with the advent of the rubber and elastic compression materials and the ability to use uh, silver plating. 
But you can see this is a copper die with a low fusing metal base. And this simply fits in to the regular stone model that we have. And next to it, we have a, an amalgam die. This is uh, not quite the same amalgam that would be used as uh, a restoration in a tooth. It's a much coarser type of amalgam. And the difficulty with this particular material, of course, is that it must be vibrated and condensed into the mold. So this restricts the use of the material again to a rigid impression material such as dental compound and rules out the possibility of using something uh, such as uh, mercaptan or silicone rubber impression materials. We do have other uh, types of model and die materials but they really are rather uh, seldom used. It may be a little difficult to notice with this one because it looks uh, like it might be a metal die or metal model in this case. In reality this is an epoxy resin which has a aluminum filler in it. So that essentially is a plastic model. The claimed advantages of course of this material are somewhat uh, negated by the fact that it takes uh, at least eight hours or for these materials to harden sufficiently uh, before the rest of the operation can continue. So that uh, although they um, might seem on the surface to be somewhat simpler than uh, using electroplating either of silver or copper, uh, nevertheless they don't have the advantage uh, of time. This is one advantage that dental stone, dental improved stone has over electroplating is that the materials harden and with an hour after pouring the impression you can be working or the dentist can be working on the dies and can be waxing up on the surfaces of these uh, stone or improved stone dies. While the electroplating is ge generally an overnight procedure and uh, sort of restricts the um, continuation of the restoration process. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.